You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. David Montgomery is coming back for the Chicago Bears, but that leaves them with a very good problem to have in the backfield. How are you going to get both running backs involved and take advantage of the talent you have at a position that all of a sudden starting to feel a little deep on offense? This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm an analyst for Pro Football Focus, and I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at Cox Sports One. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to all of our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. On the show today, the Bears are loving having some running back depth on its way back. David Montgomery officially returning to practice and now entering this win window of being designated to return from injured reserve. Not officially back on the 53-man roster yet, but very, very close. So we'll look at how exactly the Bears might be able to balance this backfield with two guys that have played at a very high level, two young guys, I should mention, that give the Bears some bright future in the running back room. So we'll figure out how they balance that right now and how they balance that with the future of the position, sort of more of a longer-term look at where Herbert fits into the plans with Montgomery. And if Tariq Cohen is someone there, and let's not forget about Damian Williams still around too. So again, a good problem to have, but still something the team needs to sort out. And then we'll wrap up with another returning member of the Bears, Matt Nagy, back from his positive COVID-19 test, back with the team. We'll hear from him on what he learned, kind of taking a new perspective away from the organization, having to watch it on TV and be remote for the last week or so. We'll start with Montgomery's pending return here. He did officially return to practice, but just because he practiced to start here on Thursday doesn't mean he's guaranteed to be good to go on Monday against the Steelers. Although, given that it is a Monday night game, it gives a little bit more of a, a ramping up period than you know a Sunday game certainly would. So there's an extra day in there for Montgomery to try and get back and ready to go. And even if he's activated in time for Monday, I'm not sure he's going to be fully ready and back into complete regular season football shape necessarily to take on a full starters load of carries. And so we're still going to see, I think, more Khalil Herbert on Monday than we might, you know, a few weeks from now, perhaps when Montgomery is whatever 100% healthy is going to look like at this stage in the season. No player is really 100% healthy, you know, halfway through the regular season. But Montgomery, you know, going to take a second or two, I think, to just get his legs up literally back under him here and kind of settle into that role. But it's tough because Khalil Herbert has been running really, really well. I mean, better than we've seen sometimes better than David Montgomery at times. Like we've seen Montgomery have up and down games over the years, seem to be picking up where he left off at the beginning of this season and finishing last season strong. But Herbert was picking up a lot of where Montgomery had been too. Obviously, you know, slightly different scales here. We're talking about a six round rookie. He's not, he's not overall as good as David Montgomery yet, by all means, don't get me not trying to go too crazy here, but Herbert has rightfully, I think, earned carries and earned a spot in this rotation. And it's it's kind of a, a, a tough spot. It's a good tough spot, but a tough spot nonetheless for the Bears to have to figure out. We were able to get a little bit of a more specific update from Matt Nagy on where exactly Montgomery is and what the chances are, play, are of him playing next week against the Mondays with this Matt Nagy press conference. Matt, no one. David's wiring the way you do. How would you describe kind of where he's at at, at this stage in terms of his eagerness? And <sighs> yeah, his, his um, David is, as you guys know, he's he's very focused. So when he comes, you know, he's, he's back out there and he's 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 at the walkthrough and you see like he's just he's focused play by play and just where he's at. But, uh, you know, I think for us physically to see where he's at and, and get him out there and get a feel for for this week. Um, I know he's worked really hard to get to this point. It does. Uh, it probably feels like forever to him, and I know it feels that way for us too. He was having such a great year, and so now we'll see where it goes. Um, but it's a great, it's a 
it's good timing if we are able to get him back and get him going. Because also too, he's a he's a he's he's grown into such a tremendous leader for that offense. And I think that part is sometimes when you're you're not around as much, the guys that can that can um, you know you miss that. And and now to be able to get him back in those huddles and that stuff is great. Matt, having a bye after this, yeah. that, how does that factor into your decision whether to bring him back now or? Chuck? Probably every guy's a little bit different. If you know he's so eager to try to get back, we'll keep an eye on on where he is. We'll we'll see how he looks. Um, that'll be key to see how he looks. He'll, he's got to tell us how he feels. And then we'll just get a feel for um, if it's the best thing for us and him. And if it is, if he's able to go and we feel good about it, you know, he's going to be up and re ready to rock and roll. So that, that's probably the biggest thing. So it's, so it's not a full-on commitment here to David His, Montgomery. Um, or excuse me. It's not David a full-on commitment as there to know, playing he's, Montgomery he's this week. But it is, I think, an opportunity here for seeing what Khalil Herbert can do in sort of maybe a slightly lesser role. I mean, we'll, we'll kind of see what that might look like. I still think that bye week in there looms heavily in terms of being able to maybe pause and say, OK, if, if Montgomery's not 100 percent and maybe there's some room to tell him, you know what, we'll we don't want to risk anything getting worse, right? We don't want, you know, we don't want to rush you back, even though you're eager to get back and want to be out there with your teammates and all that good stuff. We, we don't want you to, to rush back and all of a sudden, you know, push it a little bit too much or, you know, try to re, you know, accidentally re-injure something or anything like that, right? If you have some flexibility here because Khalil Herbert is playing so well and because you do have the bye week to kind of say, all right, let's take one more extra week back where we can just – really get you ready to totally go for the second half of the season and go on a, you know, try and turn things around in that way. Cause they're not, they're not desperate to have Montgomery back as much as he can and should provide a boost in this running game. Cause let's not forget how well he was playing beforehand. And that was before the bears really made the running game, such an emphasis in their offense. So there's a lot of great potential here. And I think we're excited to sort of see how this backfield takes shape with those three guys. It kind of leaves me wondering still what the heck's going on with Tariq Cohen. He's still recovering from his torn ACL. We don't hear anything. It was, it's been more than 12 months now, and it's not like this. You know, as much as he talked about Montgomery being so eager to get back, I mean, sure, Terry Cohen is eager to get back too, but we just don't hear that quite that same language. It's always just like, ah, yeah, he's he's working through things. So it's just kind of a, a weird spot for him, but the Bears at least haven't missed it too much in terms of overall offensive production, and it'll be, be fun to see how they start to juggle a little bit Montgomery and Herbert, not only – you know, this weekend in the short term this season, but kind of moving forward, we'll take a step back and look a little bit more bigger picture at what Herbert's emergence might mean for Cohen Montgomery and Damian Williams next on Locked On Bears. This episode of Locked On Bears is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and families can come to reconnect a place where classmates can meet up for a study group, knowing they'll have dependable Wi-Fi and endless supplies of French fries and McFlurries. Win or lose, it's a place where teammates, competitors, the home team, or the away team can come to recharge. It's the place you always look forward to stopping on a long road trip to rest your legs and refuel. Seems like no matter where you are in this country or even all over the world, when you're, when you're out on the road, you'll always be able to find a McDonald's at an exit. I know over the summer when I was in Germany, even actually, it was a train station in Switzerland where it was an early morning train. And we just needed some, something to eat. And of course, right at the train station was a, a, a Swiss McDonald's. And they had they had some really cool different McDonald's beer there, first of all, which is, which is hilarious. But then, you know, these different kind of like breakfast options that you just don't have anywhere in the States. And it's, it's really cool. Sort of the different flavors of McDonald's all the way around the world. They truly are sort of community centers anywhere you can possibly find them. So head to your local McDonald's to refuel and connect McDonald's. I'm loving it. The Chicago bears gotta be loving having two really talented running backs in the backfield right now. Again, with, with the bye week next week to be able to kind of, assess things and how you want to how, how you want to operate this backfield with the two of them because like Matt Nagy said you're not you, you don't want to really slow down David Montgomery I mean he has proven that he can be a thousand yard runner and a difference maker in the backfield but you know the last what four or five games we saw of Khalil Herbert showed us that type of potential from another a, a rookie you know another young player with some nice explosives and I wonder if if Herbert's speed 
gives him a nice balance here with Montgomery. I mean, Montgomery's not slow. He's not, but I, I think of Montgomery as, you know, that, that sort of shake and bake kind of make you miss in that little like phone booth type window. You know, it's that short area kind of quickness. And I think of Herbert more as like when he makes that cut and gets downhill, he's downhill in a hurry. It seems like he's crashing through the offensive line at just like a half step faster, even than, than Montgomery. It's like, it's more that sort of straight line acceleration of like, getting from point A to point B really, really fast. Whereas Montgomery is more like in my little window, uh, shifty, elusive in that way. And Herbert's feels a little bit more of that, like again, downhill type of, of speed. So I think there's some, some thunder and lightning type balance. You can work out there and attack offenses in different ways. And honestly, just, just keep fresh legs. I, I think that's where you can find a lot of benefit is that, you know, if you want to get up to 30, 35 runs a game, obviously Montgomery has shown he can handle the big workload. However, Maybe your whole offense could be another step better if, you know, Montgomery's got 20 of those and Herbert has 15 and they're both, you know, they're both fresher and ready to go and faster and more, you know, light on their feet throughout the course of the game. I mean, it, it, you kind of have to navigate because some running backs like to get in that rhythm a little bit more and need that 20 to 25 number to really sort of hit their stride and other running backs can kind of pop in and need to be fresher, right? So you kind of have to get the flavor of your of how your backs are going to best operate in some of these rotations. But I think this second half of the season is really going to be interesting for the future of this backfield. Because I keep saying, I keep kind of hinting at it on, on this podcast and you know other interviews that I've done where they ask about Khalil Herbert. We talked about it yesterday with Chris Carter from Lockdown Steelers on the Crossover Thursday podcast. Feels to me like Herbert is taking millions of dollars away from David Montgomery, at least in terms of the Bears, because if you can draft somebody like Khalil Herbert in the sixth round and play reasonably close to the level of play that you get from David Montgomery, then what's my incentive to pay David Montgomery a significant contract when he becomes a free agent? So it's not this summer or not this, this spring, right? It'll be the following spring. So he's under contract for 2022. It'll be the last year of his rookie deal. And then he'll be looking rightfully so for, for a contract extension. And I'm, I'm not at this point willing to, pay a significant amount of money. If he'd take a, a nice team friendly deal, absolutely. I want talented running backs in my backfield, but you know, if, if it's, if he wants up towards the higher end of running back money, if we're in that five, six, seven million dollar a year type range, I don't think that's necessarily going to be a worthwhile investment in this team. When you look, think of the positional value of running backs versus elsewhere on the roster and, and how you're able to find guys like Khalil Herbert, not that it's super easy that you can just do it, instantly whenever you want but we do see consistently enough that every year in the draft really good running backs end up in the late rounds and undrafted rookie free agents and it, it doesn't get much more obvious than Khalil Herbert right in front of your face but you know Jordan Jordan Howard was solid he was a thousand yard runner as a fifth round pick we saw the 49ers last week having uh, Elijah Mitchell six round rookie taken in the same round as Khalil Herbert and actually has more rushing yards than Khalil Herbert this season the two two six round picks I think are the two of the top three in, in yards per carry among rookie running backs. And Khalil Herbert is fifth among rookie ru rookies in rushing yards. And he didn't even play the first few games of the season, right? It, it's easier than other positions to find talented running backs later in the draft. And, and sometimes picking up guys off the street in free agency, just kind of finding players at that position. And so I, I just wonder if Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, if it's them or if the next general manager and head coach are, are going to have that appetite to, to pay Montgomery when you can, when Herbert is running well. And of course, Damian Williams has been an okay addition there. And, th and then what the heck you're going to do with Tariq Cohen. I really think he Herbert more than anything else is probably going to push him off of this roster. Not that they have the same skill set, but the Co to Tariq Cohen's cap hit next season is 5.75 million. And then the following year, it's $7.5 million in 2023. You can cut him and save about half of that next season. And of course, save a lot more than that the following year, they backloaded that contract sort of intentionally for this purpose and given how slow he's been to recover from this ACL injury. And that's not his fault. I don't, I don't, I don't blame Tariq Cohen, but we've gone 12 months without getting anything for that dollar investment. And then we haven't seen him be as explosive and a natural fit in this offense. Blame Matt Nagy, maybe more than Tariq Cohen, but regardless dollar for dollar investment and in value, the bears aren't necessarily getting that return right now with Tariq Cohen, even if it's not his fault. NFL at the end of the day is still a business and you kind of have to do what's going to make most financial sense for your team, especially when you think about maybe some salary cap challenges in the near future to start digging out of a little bit more as Ryan Pace has kind of kept pushing that back more and more. If you need to find little places to save extra money here and there without shedding massively impactful talent, 
unfortunately, I feel like Tariq Cohen can end up getting the short end of the stick there, I guess. Pun not intended, but I mean, he's five foot six, right? Short and short end of the stick. Ha 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 ha. No, but you know, of course, I wish well for Tariq Cohen and I want him to be successful in the NFL, but it's kind of the nature of the price tag on that contract. So I would love for Cohen to come back, be healthy, be a, a super productive member of this offense. But until we see that, it just doesn't seem like it's going to make a lot of financial sense for this team. It feels like rather than investing money in a big David Montgomery contract and keeping Tariq Cohen on there, if you just invest that in your offensive line, it's going to make every running back in your backfield better. It's going to make your quarterback better. And, and the analytics have sort of borne out that like, unless you are David, or excuse me, unless you are Derek Henry special at running back, just top of the top, unique, unlike anything else in the NFL, if you're not in that truly like elite hall of fame level class of running back, you're not really worth that top level running back money. You're better off going with the committee and taking the value at that position because the offensive line, generally speaking, has a greater impact on your rushing yards than your running back. Again, unless it's the, the Derrick Henry future Hall of Famers. And unfortunately, David Montgomery is in is, is a Hall of Very Gooder. Right? I mean, he's a, he's a future Hall of Very Good. At this point, I mean, we're three years into his career, so I'm not trying to write him off in any way, but up to this point, right? Unless he takes this drastic step forward to say, no, you need him in your backfield because you can't get this level of player anywhere else. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be worth any sort of major investment at running back. If he'd come cheap and be part of the rotation, absolutely. Bring him back. Matt Nagy talked about the leadership and how valuable he's been off the field. And that's why it's a big part of why he's going to stay a big part of this offense. And not that Khalil Herbert is destined to be this thousand yard rusher every year either. I mean, rookies hit walls, sophomore slumps, et cetera. He's not guaranteed to be a long-term answer there, but I just think it's easier enough to find more running backs to kind of move things forward there. So excited to see what it looks like for the second half of this season, but we should see a, hopefully more consistent and, and a longer term emphasis on running here against the Steelers and, and after the bye week, but it will be Matt Nagy's first time back with the team with maybe both his running backs, maybe not. And, you know, that time away was certainly difficult for him, but I think it was, there was some, some value he was able to take out of it too. We'll, we'll kind of get Nagy's perspective on what he learned stepping away and looking at it from the 10,000 foot view next on Locked On Bears. Today's episode of Locked On Bears brought to you by our friends at BuiltBar.com. They are the makers of the world's best tasting protein bars because they taste like candy bars, but they have all the nutrients of a protein bar. I, what I do is I use them as like a healthy dessert, right? So I finish a meal and you got that sweet tooth and you could go eat a candy bar or some kind of, you know, loaded up sugary dessert that's just going to add extra calories and make you feel like crap. But Built Bars will still give you that same flavor and that same craving sort of solved, but low sugar, low calories, high fiber, and high protein. It's covered in 100% real chocolate. They're soft, they're easy to chew, and they come in a bunch of different flavors. And you can buy the mixed box, and so you can get a different variety. You can get some fruit ones like raspberry and strawberry and lemon, and but then you can get more like the sweet, savory, chocolatey, you know, salted caramel. They've got cookies and cream, so many different great flavors. I've tried pretty much all of them at this point. Have not found a bad one yet. I'm telling you, you got to try them for yourself. Head on over to built.com. Enter our promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. That's promo code L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Chicago Bears are approaching almost a touchdown underdog against the Pittsburgh Steelers over with our friends at betonline.ag. The line for the Monday night football game is Steelers minus six and a half, the home favorites there. The money line is set at Steelers minus 267 with the Bears plus 227. If you're feeling the potential straight up upset in this matchup, your over under is just 40 points though. We heard yesterday that on the crossover Thursday that both teams are going to win defense. And as I glance at the other point totals during this game, the, the odds makers at betonline.ag have this one as the lowest scoring game of the week at just 40 points. So if you like those odds, check out betonline.ag. It's the number one place we recommend for all your sports betting needs, football, basketball, hawker, soccer, hawker, hockey, soccer, tennis, you name it, mix the sports together. They've got odds for them too at betonline. Sign up today for a free account and enter and our promo code on to receive free 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Doesn't seem like Matt Nagy's absence 
affected the Bears' odds to win last week and not really affecting their odds to win this week, another really quality opponent. But it was interesting kind of seeing how the team responded to Chris Tabor as a special teams coach. It was kind of refreshing to have him as the post-game press conference guy to kind of you know be a little bit forward sometimes than what we've heard from Matt Nagy. But obviously he's itching to get back out there and be a part of this team again. But he kind of got to watch it as a fan this past Sunday, just like you and I, he was, he was on a couch. He did end up revealing that he watched from a hotel kind of hauled away in a room because he was COVID positive. So he didn't want to be around people or his family didn't want to get them sick or whatever. So, you know, the couch and the TV and probably some room service, I'm guessing in there to, to watch the game probably on mute, but you know, he took notes and was trying to write the plays as they were coming along and keep up with the game that way. I'm sure it was a difficult experience for him, but from what it sounds like it was kind of a, as much as he didn't like it and, and would much, much rather prefer to be out there with his team, it, it was able to give him somewhat of a different perspective and, and kind of take that step back and pause right in the middle of the season without it being a bye week, right? a pause and a step away while still being able to watch your team. And I think he had the right mindset in terms of trying to find different positives he can take from it. I know that you, you hated being out. Yeah. Um, was there any good part about it at all for you? Was there any kind of reset for you or did I don't know if that slows things down for you or gives you a different perspective on things to have that week. It did. It did, Jason. It, it, it allowed me, you know, um, you never want that to happen. And you, you get frustrated. You, you, you know, you say, man, it's, you, you really can't make it up to the fact that you can't be, you're a head coach of, an, of a team and you can't be there with your team. That's hard. How do you deal with that? And I think the initial reaction for me was, Okay, how am I going to handle this? But then when you get to that time to be able to sit back and say, okay, where am I? Where's, we, I talk about it with the staff and the players. Where's the 30,000-foot view right now? I get to step away from being inside in the trees, step up and see, okay, how's this going? Where, where are things? And, and how do I as a leader be able to see where we're at? And heading into that week before playing the game, uh, you know, you got to handle the weekly stuff. But then at night, you get some time to be able to think, you know, think where you're at. And where you're at as a as a head coach, where you're at as a person, where you're at as a leader, all that stuff. And I I, um, I really believe that it's going to help me. Uh, and I used it as best as I could to to reflect on a lot of stuff, you know. And the the biggest thing is is understanding that I can't and we can't control before we can't control what's going on and what's going to happen future win or losing games stuff like that injuries, et cetera. It's just we have to worry about today. And, and I believe that. And I don't just say that. That's, that's, that's real. And so you got to stay in the moment. And, um, you know, even me personally, you know, just with you, you get to be able to make sure that everything's good on the personal side and just you really get to shoot your – you're not at the office. So you got to be able to use your time and reflect. And that's what I, th I think I did. So it seems like a lot of Matt Nagy's reflection was a little bit more on the personal side at least in terms of what he was willing to share there publicly it wasn't so much like you know I, I had some mass realization about the offense and how the plays should be called or how the game plan should go together but I don't I don't know that he was gonna necessarily say that too but it doesn't sound like it was you know like the matrix taking the red pill or whatever and and you know your eyes opening to like, oh, here's what we're supposed to do with Justin Fields, and here's how this offense should be operating, and things like that. You know, it doesn't seem like it was quite, it was quite that uh, type of a realization. But I, I just wonder if if there is some new context he's sort of able to apply there. That you know, when he's watching the TV, at, you know, the copy from the hotel room. I was gonna say at home, but from the hotel room, he he's he talked about it a little bit later that like, you know, he can't, he doesn't know the play call just like the rest of us. He's seeing them line up, but he's not, you know, he doesn't have a live feed to the headset of, of Bill Lazor talking to him in the hotel room, right? So he just, he has to see him line up and run it the same way he does for us. And of course, as the head coach who knows all the plays, it's easy enough when you're watching a game and when you actually know the plays to see what the plays are immediately after they happen. And as they, you know, as you see the, the route start to run out, you learn to be able to sort of see multiple routes with your eyes and know what co different concepts look like without being able to individually follow every single player, right? There's a, there's a method to that after the play starts, but I think what it does do is he goes into it, not by not knowing the play ahead of time, you're not sort of pre framing, you know, what you should expect, right? If you go in, if you're in, when you, even when he's not the play caller, but he's the head coach and he hears it's like, okay, this play is, 
I, I don't know, the bubble screen, right? The, every Bears fan loves the little wide receiver screens. You, you go in saying, okay, this is the wide receiver screen, and I know this fits into our, our game flow right here, and you sort of have this expectation of like, here's, here's where I want it to be, here's what it's supposed to look, here's why it's going now and all that stuff, and you're sort of, you're really deep in the nitty-gritty and the moment-to-moment -moment and the context, but when he's able to sort of step, take a step back and just maybe see each play a little bit separated from the context of of that moment i mean as much as you can from the tv i i just wonder if maybe you see a play differently and you're like you know what i i wouldn't have called that there i wouldn't i wasn't expecting bill to call that there or i would have expected this there and then either that call that you didn't expect it work or the call that you expected didn't work or you know things like that where i i just think when you remove yourself from being right in the mix of everything there is some value there when it's been you know what has it been seven eight weeks of just like ingrained in the huddle digging deep and you know you're just so tight on absolutely everything and to be able to kind of step back and see it sort of play out live right it's one thing you know even when you're watching film yeah you're taking that step back but you still know what happened on each play and and when you're watching the film you'll know what play call it is before you click play on the play so i, I don't think you're, you're getting quite the same it's not a one-to-one -one comparison there either i really think there is something to this again it's not going to be this you know awakening, life-changing, game-changing type of realization per se. But I just wonder if maybe, maybe it's a, a different perspective that Nagy wasn't really able to consider otherwise. And I, and I sort of like the timing here of having it be, and of course I didn't want Matt Nagy to get COVID. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I don't want him to be sick. I don't, you know, even if I, again, we talked about this before, but even if I think he's not the best head coach for the Bears and, and likely should be fired at the end of the season, I don't want, I don't wish anything bad on him personally. However, if if he had to miss a game for COVID this season, the timing is interesting here because it, it missed the 49ers game back for the Steelers game. And then you get the bye week. So it's like you get to take a step back, see the 49ers game, come up with some ideas, maybe see what that's like against the Steelers. And then you have the bye week again to pause and reassess that. Right. So you kind of get this like this in and out where it's like a pause. We'll try it and then we'll reassess it again. It's not like you're just back into the grind for 10 more weeks straight where you'll never get a chance to reassess again. It's sort of this, this back and forth right now of out in out or I guess in, out, in, out, you know what I mean? So you can kind of kind of see when he's part of the team, away from the team, games playing, games not being played, it, it's a chance to test some things and then get a chance to pause again. You get two pauses here with some play in the middle. I think will be a, a, a advantageous window or a silver lining. How about that for Matt Nagy having been, been out? Is it going to result in three or four more wins this season? No, but I think it is. there is some benefit there that they wouldn't have been able to otherwise get. So, We'll see what they have in store for us against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Normally, our Friday podcast like this would be a game plan, but because they play on Monday, on Monday morning, we will put together a game plan for how the Chicago Bears can defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers, what we need to see this team do. We'll probably know by then, perhaps, if it's going to be David Montgomery or not, and we'll we'll break it all down for you where the matchups are that are going to decide this game. So make sure that you subscribe to the Lockdown Bears podcast to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Thanks for making Lockdown Bears your first listen each and every day. That's why we're here for you five days a week. Come on back for more. Hopefully you'll enjoy having a, a Sunday off from Bears football, kind of get a sense of the rest of the team. And then, you know, we can come back on Monday and it'll feel like a little bit of a bonus Bears football and a bonus opportunity to bear down.